The Somerset Light Infantry Prince Alberts was a light infantry infantry regiment of the British Army, which served under various titles from 1685 to 1959. In 1959, the regiment was amalgamated with the Duke of Cornwall's Light Infantry to form the Somerset and Cornwall Light Infantry which was again amalgamated, in 1968, with the King's own Yorkshire Light Infantry, the King's Shropshire Light Infantry and the Durham Light Infantry to form the Light Infantry. In 2007, however, the Light Infantry was amalgamated further with the Devonshire and Dorset Regiment, the Royal Gloucestershire, Berkshire and Wiltshire Regiment and the Royal Green Jackets to form the Rifles. Topic. History Topic. Early history Topic. Formation The regiment was one of nine regiments of foot raised by James II when he expanded the size of the army in response to the Monmouth Rebellion. On 20 June 1685, Theophilus Hastings, 7th Earl of Huntingdon was issued with a warrant authorizing him to raise a regiment, and accordingly the Earl of Huntingdon's regiment of foot was formed, mainly recruiting in the county of Buckinghamshire. Topic. Jacobite Wars The regiment remained in existence when William III came to the throne in the Glorious Revolution of 1688. Ferdinando Hastings took over the colonelcy of the regiment, which accordingly became Hastings's regiment of foot. Hastings's regiment first saw action at the Battle of Killiecrankie, where they failed to halt the advance of Jacobite rebels, although they were later defeated at the Battle of Dunkeld. The regiment accompanied William to Ireland in the following year, fighting in the decisive Williamite victories at the Boyne and Cork. Topic. Nine Years' War The Jacobite struggles in Scotland and Ireland were part of a wider European conflict that became known as the Nine Years' War. In 1692, Hastings' regiment sailed to Flanders and, in 1694, took part in the disastrous amphibious assault at Camaret on the French coast. In 1695, Colonel Fernando Hastings was found guilty of extortion, and dismissed. Sir John Jacob became the colonel, and it was as Jacob's regiment of foot that they returned to England at the end of the war in 1697. Topic. War of the Spanish Succession After a period of garrison duty in Ireland, Jacob's regiment returned to Flanders in 1701. In the following year, the Colonel C again changed, with Sir John Jacob choosing to retire. He sold the Colonel C to his brother-in-law, Lieutenant General James Barry, 4th Earl of Barrymore, for 1,400 guineas. With the outbreak of the War of the Spanish Succession, the Earl of Barrymore's Regiment of Foot saw action at the sieges or battles of Kaiserwerth, Venlo, Ruermont, Hoy, Limburg and Liege. In 1704, Barrymore's Regiment moved to the Iberian Peninsula taking part in the defense of the recently captured Gibraltar, 1704-05, and the Siege of Barcelona, 1705. In 1706, the bulk of the regiment was converted into a regiment of dragoons due to a shortage of cavalry. Barrymore returned to England with a small cadre, the regiment was re-raised and returned to Spain. The unit fought at the Battle of Almanza 1707, the Battle of Lacaya 1709, the Battle of Tortosa 1711, and the Battle of St. Mateo 1711. In 1711, the regiment started a long period of garrison duty at Gibraltar. In 1715, they became Cotton's regiment of foot when Stanhope Cotton succeeded Barrymore. Anglo-Spanish War 
When war broke out with Spain in 1727, cottons were part of the force that resisted the Spanish siege of Gibraltar. The regiment returned to England in the following year. It remained there until 1742, with the name changing with the Colonel C. Kerr's Regiment of Foot Lord Mark Kerr in 1725, Middleton's Regiment of Foot Brigadier General John Middleton in 1732 and Pulteney's Regiment of Foot General Harry Pulteney in 1739. Topic. War of the Austrian Succession In 1742, Pulteney's regiment sailed to Flanders, and in the following year was part of the joint British, Hanoverian and Austrian force that secured a victory over the French at the Battle of Dettingen in June 1743. In May 1745, the situation was reversed when they were part of the Allied army decisively defeated at the Battle of Fontenoy. Topic. The 45 In 1745, Pulteney's regiment returned to Britain, moving to Scotland to suppress the Jacobite Rising of 1745. They formed part of the defeated forces at the Battle of Falkirk in January 1746. Three months later, they took part in the final defeat of the Jacobites in Culloden. Topic. Return to Europe Following the ending of the Jacobite Rising, Pulteney's regiment returned to Flanders, where they fought at the Battle of Roku October 1746, and the Battle of La Felde or Val July 1747. In both cases, the Allied forces were defeated by the French. The regiment returned to England in 1747, and the war was formally ended by the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle in 1748. Topic: 13th Regiment of Foot. By the late 17th century, each regiment of the Standing Army had been allotted a rank in the order of precedence. These numbers came to be increasingly used until a royal warrant of 1751 decreed that regiments should in future be known by their numbers only. Accordingly, Pulteney's regiment became the 13th Regiment of Foot. The redesignated 13th Foot entered a 30 year period of garrison service in England, Ireland, Gibraltar, and Menorca. Topic. American Revolutionary War In 1775, the American Revolutionary War broke out, widening into war with France from 1778 and Spain in 1779. The 13th Foot sailed for the West Indies, arriving in Barbados. They saw little active service, returning to England in 1782, moving on to Ireland in 1783. Topic. 13th 1st Somersetshire Regiment of Foot It was at this time that the regiment's link to Somerset was first formed. On 21 August 1782, the commander-in-chief of the forces, Henry Seymour Conway, issued a regulation giving an English county designation to each regiment of foot other than those with a royal title or highland regiments. The intention was to improve recruitment during the unpopular war, and the Secretary at War, Thomas Townsend issued a circular letter to the lieutenants of each county in England in the following terms. My lord, the very great deficiency of men in the regiments of infantry being so very detrimental to the public service, the king has thought proper to give the names of the different counties to the old corps, in hopes that, by the zeal and activity of the principal nobility and gentry in the several counties, some considerable assistance may be given towards recruiting these regiments. The regiment duly became the 13th, 1st Somersetshire, Regiment of Foot, the 40th Foot becoming the 2nd Somersetshire. 
The attempt to link regimental areas to specific counties was found to be impractical, with regiments preferring to recruit from major centers of population. By June 1783, each regiment was again recruiting throughout the country, although the county names were to remain. Topic. French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars In 1790, the regiment sailed to Jamaica. In 1793, Britain was again at war with France, this time with the revolutionary regime. The 13th Foot landed in the French colony of Saint-Domingue, where the Haitian Revolution was in progress, returning to Ireland in 1797 and England in 1799. The 13th were next engaged in a series of minor coastal assaults on the Spanish coast in 1800. In 1801, the regiment sailed to Egypt to help repel the French invasion force. The 13th took part in the Siege of Alexandria. In 1802, the regiment was awarded the badge of a Sphinx superscribed, Egypt, for display on the regimental colors in commemoration of the campaign. A temporary end to hostilities with France came in March 1802, with the signing of the Treaty of Amiens. The 13th Foot left Egypt in that month, sailing to Malta, where they were stationed for a year, before moving to Gibraltar. In 1805, the regiment returned to England. After occupying various stations in the south of the country, the 13th sailed for Ireland in May 1807. The regiment was brought up to full strength by an intake of volunteers from the Irish militia and sailed to Bermuda, arriving in March 1808. The regiment lost large numbers of men to disease while on the island. War had again broken out with France, and the 13th Foot formed part of the force that invaded and occupied the French colony of Martinique in January and February 1809. Topic. War with the United States In 1812, the war had widened to include the United States of America. In the following year, the 13th Foot left Martinique for Quebec, from whence they proceeded to protect the frontiers of Upper Canada. The regiment crossed the St. Lawrence River and took part in minor actions around Plattsburgh and Lake Champlain. The war concluded in 1815, and the 13th Foot returned to England in July of that year. The regiment spent the next few years on garrison duty in Jersey, Guernsey, England, Scotland and Ireland. Topic. 13th 1st Somersetshire Regiment Light Infantry In September 1822, the 13th Foot was moved to Chatham in Kent, where it was brought up to strength for service in India. While there, it was reconstituted as a light infantry regiment in December and was retitled as the 13th 1st Somersetshire Regiment Light Infantry. Topic. First Anglo-Burmese War The 13th Light Infantry arrived in Kolkata in May and June 1823. Soon after arrival, Burmese forces attacked Kachar, a territory under British protection. War was formally declared on 5 March 1824, and the 13th took part in the campaign that lasted until February 1826, when a treaty was signed, with the King of Ava agreeing to cede territory and pay compensation to the British East India Company. The 13th Light Infantry returned to garrison duty in India. From 1826 to 1838, they were stationed in Baharampur, Danapur, Agra and Karnal. Topic. First Anglo-Afghan War In 1837, Persian troops, allied to the Russians, occupied the Herat region of Afghanistan. The British, who feared Russian intervention in the area, decided to remove the Emir of Afghanistan, Dust Muhammad, and to replace him with a pro-British monarch, Shuja Shah Durrani. Accordingly, an expeditionary force, known as the 
Army of the Indus was formed. The 13th Light Infantry formed part of the invasion force, joining the other units in November 1838. The army passed into Afghanistan in March 1839, taking Kandahar in April without resistance. The 13th took part in the decisive victory at Ghazni in July 1839. The British initially achieved their objective of enthroning Shuja in August 1839. The 13th formed part of the occupation force that attempted to enforce the rule of the new monarch, but, in October 1841, a popular uprising against Shuja broke out. The 13th found itself engaged in operations against the rebels who had overthrown Shuja and taken the capital, Kabul. In November 1841, the regiment was forced to retreat to the fortified town of Jalalabad. The town was soon encircled, leading to a lengthy siege. In April of the following year, the garrison, under the command of Sir Robert Sale of the 13th, broke the siege and defeated the Afghan forces under Akbar Khan. Although the war, which ended in October 1842 with the return of the Army of the Indus to India, was essentially a reverse for the British forces, battle honours and campaign medals were awarded. Topic. 13th First Somersetshire Prince Albert's Light Infantry Regiment of Foot The conduct of the 13th at Jalalabad was officially rewarded on the 26th of August 1842 when Prince Albert offered his patronage to the regiment and permitted his name to be used in its title becoming the 13th First Somersetshire Prince Albert's Light Infantry Regiment of Foot at the same time, the regimental facings were changed from yellow to royal blue, and the badge of a mural crown with a scroll inscribed, Jalalabad, was granted for display on the colors and uniform of the regiment. The unit was also honored with the firing of a 21-gun salute at each army station it passed on its return to India. The 13th Light Infantry returned to England in 1845 after 23 years of foreign service. Presented with new colours at Portsmouth in 1846, the regiment moved to Ireland in the following year, remaining there until 1850, before spending a year in Scotland. From 1851 to 1854, they were stationed in Gibraltar. Topic. Crimean War In 1854, the regiment was brought up to full strength and, in June of the following year, landed in the Crimea as part of the Anglo-French forces conducting a campaign against the Russians. They took part in the Siege of Sevastopol, and remained in the area after the ending of hostilities in February 1856, subsequently sailing to South Africa. Topic. Return to India In May 1857, the Indian mutiny broke out. Reinforcements were requested, and the 13th arrived at Kolkata in October 1857. They took part in some minor actions. Topic. Formation of 2nd Battalion The British army had been shown to be overstretched by the Crimean War, while the mutiny in India had led to the responsibility for providing a garrison in the subcontinent from the Honourable East India Company to the Crown Forces. Accordingly, there was a need for an expansion and reorganisation of the existing regiments. Rather than raising new infantry regiments, the senior regiments of foot were each ordered to raise a second battalion, with the existing regiment being redesignated as the first battalion. The second battalion of the 13th Light Infantry was raised at Winchester in January 1858. The two battalions, while sharing a depot, operated as separate units. The 1st Battalion saw active service in South Africa, fighting in the 9th Kosa War of 1878 and Anglo-Zulu War of 1879. Topic. Prince Albert's Somerset Light Infantry Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Childers reforms. The regiment was not fundamentally affected by the Cardwell reforms of the 1870s, which gave it a depot at Jalalabad Barracks in Taunton from 1873, or by the Childers reforms of 1881 as it already possessed two battalions, there was no need for it to amalgamate with another regiment. Under the reforms the regiment became the Prince Albert's Light Infantry Somersetshire Regiment on 1 July 1881. As the County Regiment of Somersetshire, it also gained the county's militia and rifle volunteer battalions, which were integrated into the regiment as numbered battalions. Within months the regiment had been retitled to Prince Albert's Somersetshire Light Infantry. On formation, the regiment had the following battalions. 1st Battalion, formerly 1st Battalion, 13th Foot. 2nd Battalion, formerly 2nd Battalion, 13th Foot. 3rd Battalion, formerly 1st Somersetshire Light Infantry Militia. 4th Battalion, formerly 2nd Somersetshire Light Infantry Militia. 1st Volunteer Battalion, formerly 1st Somersetshire Rifle Volunteer Corps. 2nd Volunteer Battalion, formerly 2nd Somersetshire Rifle Volunteer Corps. 3rd Volunteer Battalion, formerly 3rd Somersetshire Rifle Volunteer Corps. The two regular battalions continued the system of alternating between home and foreign stations. Topic: Actions in India and Burma. The 2nd Battalion took part in the Third Anglo-Burmese War of 1885 to 1887. Following an initial invasion, the battalion spent two years broken up into small groups pacifying the inhabitants of the country. While the unit lost only 17 men in combat, 150 were to die from disease. During its period in India, the 1st Battalion was mainly stationed in the northwest frontier province, and took part in First Moment Campaign of 1897. The battalion was posted at Rawalpindi until late 1902 when it moved to Peshawar near the historic Khyber Pass on the border to Afghanistan. Topic: <laughs> Second Boer War. In October 1899, war broke out between British Empire and the Boer Republics of South Africa. The 2nd Battalion landed in the Cape in December 1899, and was part of the British forces defeated at the Battle of Spion K.O.P. in January 1900. In February of the same year, the battalion helped to relieve the Siege of Ladysmith. They spent the remainder of the conflict taking part in a number of minor actions. The 4th Militia Battalion was embodied in December 1899, and 415 officers and men embarked in the SS Kuldonan Castle in early March 1900 for service in South Africa. A large contingent of the men returned home in May 1902 on the SS Sicilia. Topic. Haldane reforms The Boer War had severely stretched the resources of the British Army and had exposed the weakness of the militia and volunteers as an effective reserve force. In 1907–1908, Richard Haldane, Secretary of State for War reorganized these second-line units of the Army as part of a larger series of reforms. The existing militia was reduced in size and redesignated as the Special Reserve, while the volunteer force was merged with the yeomanry to form a new territorial force, organized into 14 infantry divisions, liable for service in wartime. In 1908, the volunteers and militia were reorganized nationally, with the former becoming the territorial force and the latter the Special Reserve. The regiment now had one reserve and two territorial battalions. Topic. First World War 
The regiment's name was again changed to the Prince Albert's Somerset Light Infantry in 1912. The regiment saw active service in the First World War, with battalions involved on the Western Front, Mesopotamia, now Iraq, and Palestine. Altogether, 18 battalions existed during the war. One of the new battalions was formed by the conversion of the West Somerset Yeomanry, a territorial force cavalry regiment, the rest were formed by the duplication of the existing territorial force units or by the formation of new service battalions. Interwar period Following the armistice ending the First World War, the war raised battalions were rapidly disbanded. The regular battalions returned to the pre war system of alternating home and foreign stations. The 1st Battalion was stationed in Northern Ireland and England, before being stationed in Egypt 1926 to 1928, Hong Kong 1928 to 1930, and India from 1930. The 2nd Battalion, which had spent the entire war in India, fought in the brief Third Anglo-Afghan War in 1919, seeing active service in Afghanistan and on the northwest frontier. Returning to India in 1920, the battalion moved to the Sudan in 1926 and England in 1927. The territorial force was reorganized to become the Territorial Army in 1920, and the 4th and 5th battalions were reconstituted. At the same time, the 3rd Special Reserve Battalion was placed in suspended animation. And was never again embodied. On the 1st of January 1921, the regimental title was changed a final time, becoming the Somerset Light Infantry, Prince Alberts. Topic: <laughs> Somerset Light Infantry, Prince Alberts. Topic: <laughs> Second World War. Altogether, the Somerset Light Infantry raised 11 battalions for service during the Second World War, six of which saw service overseas. In addition to the regular Army 1st and 2nd battalions, the existing 4th and 5th Territorial Army battalions both formed second line duplicate units in 1939 prior to war being declared. The 6th and 7th battalions, both part of 45th Wessex Division on the outbreak of war. The 8th Home Defense Battalion, which was also formed in 1939, was renumbered as the 30th Battalion in 1941. The 9th, 10th, 11th Holding and 50th Holding Battalions were all formed in 1940, although the latter two had ceased to exist by the end of the year. Topic: Regular Army the 1st Battalion, Somerset Light Infantry, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel John Harding, was stationed in British India at the outbreak of war and would remain in the Far East throughout the conflict. The battalion fought in the Burma Campaign with the 114th Indian Infantry Brigade which was part of the 7th Indian Infantry Division, itself part of the British 14th Army, led by Bill Slim. John Waddy served with the battalion in the early stages of the war. The 2nd Battalion was serving with the 2nd Gibraltar Brigade as part of the garrison there, upon the outbreak of war in 1939. On 1 December 1943, the brigade was redesignated the 28th Infantry Brigade, which also included the 2nd King's Regiment Liverpool, and 1st Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders later two-quarters Royal Hampshire Regiment. On 24 December, the brigade became attached to the British 4th Infantry Division. The 2nd Somersets, with the rest of the division, arrived in Italy in March 1944 and served in the Italian campaign as part of the British 8th Army in many battles such as that of Monte Cassino, one of the worst battles of the Italian campaign, in 1944, where they played an important role alongside Second Kings and fought in Operation Diadem and on the Gothic Line from August–September 1944. 
In November, the 4th Division, with the rest of 3rd Corps, was sent to Greece to help calm the Greek Civil War, which was caused after the German army withdrew from the country. Topic. Territorial Army The regiment also had four territorial battalions, although only two would serve overseas. Throughout the war, the 4th Battalion, Somerset Light Infantry served with the 129th Brigade, alongside the 4th and 5th Wiltshire Regiment, part of the 43rd Wessex Infantry Division, and spent most of its existence in the United Kingdom in Kent under 12th Corps of Southern Command. The 7th Battalion, which had been created on 24 August 1939 as a second-line duplicate of the 5th, was originally serving alongside both the 5th and 6th Battalion battalions in 135th Brigade, of the 45th Division. On the 11th of September 1942, the battalion was transferred to the 214th Infantry Brigade, which included the 5th Duke of Cornwall's Light Infantry and the 9th Somersets later replaced by the 1st Worcestershire Regiment. Both the 4th and 7th Battalions served in the Northwest Europe Campaign after the Normandy landings on 6 June 1944, D-Day. The division fought very well in the Battle of Normandy, particularly so during the Battle for Caen in Operation Epsom in late June, at the Battle for Hill 112 Operation Jupiter. During the battle, the 4th Somersets suffered 556 casualties out of a strength of 845. Between 26 June and 14 July, 4th Schley received 19 reinforcement officers and 479 oars as replacements. The battalion became involved in trench warfare similar to that of the Great War. They later played a large part in the disastrous Operation Market Garden, a small role in the Battle of the Bulge and finally took part in Operation Plunder, the crossing of the River Rhine by the Allies. Topic. Hostilities only The other battalion to see active service was the 10th Battalion, raised in 1940, which was converted in 1942 into the 7th Parachute Battalion, and was now part of the Parachute Regiment, itself part of the British Army's airborne forces. They were assigned to the 3rd Parachute Brigade, which was originally part of the 1st Airborne Division, but were later assigned to the newly raised 5th Parachute Brigade, part of the 6th Airborne Division, which had also just been raised. The 7th Parachute Battalion would see its first combat during Operation Tonga, the British airborne landings in Normandy, the night before 6 June 1944, D-Day. They would then go on to serve throughout the Battle of Normandy as normal infantrymen. The battalion then played a part in the Battle of the Bulge in December 1944 and then again in Operation Varsity in March 1945, the largest airborne drop of the war, including both the 6th Airborne and the U.S. 17th Airborne Division, with well over 16,000 airborne troops being involved. The Schley also had responsibility for defending local airfields, including RNAS Charles. Charlton Horathorn, where they prepared trenches, hardpoints, and machine gun positions. The 30th Battalion, of 43rd Infantry Brigade, formed part of the British First Army, and served in Tunisia and Italy. Post war to amalgamation The 1st Battalion was the last British Infantry Battalion to leave India after its independence, departing on 28 February 1948. During the final ceremony, the battalion marched through Bombay now Mumbai, and received a guard of honour from the newly formed Indian Army at the Gateway of India. The 2nd Battalion ended the war in Greece, subsequently forming part of the Allied Occupation Force of Austria. The two regular battalions returned to the United Kingdom where they were amalgamated into a single 1st Battalion on 28 June 1948 This was part of a general reduction in the size of the infantry following Indian independence. The reconstituted 1st Battalion was stationed in Germany as part of the British Army of the Rhine from 1951 to 1953. 
From 1952 to 1955, it formed part of the British forces fighting in the Malayan Emergency, where it took part in jungle warfare. In its final years, the battalion was involved in a number of conflicts. The anti tank platoon formed part of the Anglo French force that intervened in the Suez Crisis of 1956. The majority of the battalion was in Cyprus, where a nationalist uprising against British rule had broken out. In 1957, they returned to Germany. In 1947, the Territorial Army was reconstituted and the 4th and 6th Battalion were reformed as infantry battalions. The 5th Battalion was reformed as a unit of the Royal Artillery. Three years later, the 4th Battalion absorbed the two other units. Topic. Amalgamation The regiment amalgamated with the Duke of Cornwall's Light Infantry in 1959 to form the Somerset and Cornwall Light Infantry. This, in turn, amalgamated with the three other regiments of the Light Infantry Brigade to form the Light Infantry in 1968. Topic. Regimental Museum The Somerset Military Museum is based at Taunton Castle. Topic. Battle honors The regiment was awarded the following battle honors for display on the colors, displayed on the regimental colors. First World War Battle honors in bold were selected for display on the King's, Queen's colors. Second World War Battle honors in bold were selected for display on the King's, Queen's colors. Topic. Colonels The colonels of the regiment were as follows. Topic. Earl of Huntingdon's Regiment of Foot 1685 1688, Colonel Theophilus Hastings, 7th Earl of Huntingdon. 1688 1695, Colonel Ferdinando Hastings. 1695 1702, Colonel Sir John Jacob. 1702-1715, L.T. Gen. James Barry, 4th Earl of Barrymore. 1715-1725, Colonel Stanhope Cotton. 1725-1732, Gen. Lord Mark Kerr. 1732-1739, Brig. Gen. John Middleton. 1739-1766, Gen. Hun Harry Pulteney. Topic. 13th Regiment of Foot 1766-1767, F.M. H.R.H. William Henry, 1st Duke of Gloucester. 1767-1789, Gen. Hun James Murray. Topic. The 13th 1st Somersetshire Regiment of Foot 1789-1804, Gen. George Ainsley 1804-1813, Gen. Alexander Campbell 1813-1843, Gen. Edward Morrison Topic. The 13th 1st Somersetshire, Prince Albert's Light Infantry 1843 to 1846, Major Gen Sir Robert Henry Sale GCB. 1846 to 1863, FM. Sir William Maynard Gom GCB. 1863 to 1864, Major Gen Philip McPherson. 1864 to 1880, Gen Philip Spencer Stanhope. Topic. 
The Somerset Light Infantry, Prince Albert's. 1880–1900, Gen. Lord Mark Ralph George Kerr GCB. 1900–1901, Lt. Gen. Sir John William Cox KCB. 1901–1910, Major Gen. Edward Lutwich England CB. 1910–1914, Major Gen. Sir Henry Hallam Parr KCB CMG. 1914 to 1919, Major Gen Richard Lloyd Payne CBDSO. 1919 to 1929, LT Gen Sir Thomas Doyley Snow KCB KCMG. 1929 to 1938, Gen Sir Walter Pippon Braithwaite GCB. 1938 to 1947, Major Gen Vivian Henry Bruce Magendy CBDSO. 1947 to 1953, Lt. Gen. Sir John George Day Row Swain KCB CBE. 1953 to 1959, F.M. Sir John Harding, First Lord Harding of Petherton GCB CBE DSOMC. Topic: Victoria Cross recipients. Lieutenant George Albert Cairns Private Patrick Carlin Major William Knox Leet Sergeant William Napier Private Thomas Henry Sage Topic. Dress and insignia Topic. Facings From its establishment in 1685, the regiment had a red coat with yellow facings. This was originally the color of the cloth lining of the coat, which appeared in the turned back cuffs, skirts and lapels. Later, as uniform styles changed, it became the color of the collar and cuffs of the jacket or tunic. A royal warrant of 1751 first regulated the facing colors of the marching regiments of foot. Those of the 13th Foot, or Lieutenant General Pulteney's regiment, was given as Philemet, yellow, a description repeated in the next clothing regulation of 1768. Philemet was a corruption of the French foy morte or dead leaf, a shade of yellow approximating to that of a faded autumn leaf. When the 13th Foot was given the title Prince Albert's, in 1842, it became a royal regiment, and the facings were changed to dark blue. The braid and lace worn on officers' coats was silver until 1830 and thereafter gold. It had a black line threaded through it. Topic. Sergeant's sash A distinction unique to the regiment was that the warrant officers and sergeants wore their sashes over the left shoulder and tied on the right side, in the same manner as officers. This commemorated the regiment's stand at Culloden, where the large number of officer casualties led to the sergeants taking command. This was authorized in 1865, although appears to have been worn earlier without authority. The origin is disputed, since the regiment did not report any casualties as a result of Culloden. In 1898, officers of all regiments were ordered to wear the sash knotted on the left side, with the exception of the Somerset Light Infantry who were permitted to continue with the knot on the right. Topic. Light infantry distinctions In 1822, the regiment was granted light infantry distinctions, which survived in the full dress of 1914 as a dark green home service helmet instead of the dark blue of line infantry and a bugle horn incorporated in its badge. The forage cap and post-war No. 1 dress uniform worn by the regiment was also dark green. Topic. Badges 
The first distinctive badge awarded to the regiment was the Sphinx for Service in Egypt, authorized in 1802. From 1814, a stringed bugle horn had been the approved badge of light infantry and rifle regiments. When the 13th Foot were converted to light infantry in 1822, the badge adopted for the Shako head dress was a bugle horn with strings with the numerals 13 in the center and surmounted by the Sphinx. When a new model of Shako was adopted in 1844, a mural crown and scroll inscribed Jalalabad were added. Similar devices were used on the plate of the home service helmet adopted in 1878. In 1898, when khaki service dress was introduced, a metal badge was designed for the new slouch hat. This consisted of a bugle surmounted by a mural crown above which was a scroll inscribed, Jalalabad. The cipher, P.A. for Prince Albert was placed within the strings of the bugle horn. This remained the regiment's cap badge on various forms of head dress until amalgamation. <laughs> 